So um, this is a sermon that I delivered a couple of uh, weeks ago um, at our joint service. And I just thought I'd put it up here just to share. Um, so it's going to be a meditation upon Second Chronicles. So as we think about our own end of exile and our own partial return to the new normal. So Second Chronicles 36. Um, 19 through to 23. It says this, they burnt down God's temple, they tore down the wall of Jerusalem. They burnt all of its fortified buildings, they destroyed all of its valuable items. He deported to Babylon all who escaped the sword and they served him and his sons until the Persian kingdom rose to power. This took place to fulfill the Lord's message spoken through Jeremiah and lasted until the land experienced its sabbatical years. All of the time of its desolation of the land rested in order to fulfill the 70 years. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in fulfillment of the Lord's message spoken through Jeremiah, the Lord motivated King Cyrus of Persia to issue a proclamation throughout the kingdom and so put it in writing and it read this is what king cyrus of persia says the lord god of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth he's appointed me to build a temple for him in jerusalem which is in judea any one of his people among you may go up there and may the lord his god be with him And this passage refers to the Babylonian exile, and it lasted for around 70 years. At the very beginning, we're told about the destruction and the burning of the temple. And at the end, we're told about the rebuilding of the temple, the house of prayer for all nations. And as the Israelites went into exile, they assembled at a place called Ramah, which had been where Rachel had been buried. Rachel was the mother of Joseph and Benjamin, and is depicted in Jeremiah 31 as crying out for her children, the tribes of Ephraim, Manasseh and Benjamin, as they go into exile nearly a thousand years after her death. Jeremiah 31, 15 says, A cry is heard in Ramah, deep anguish and bitter weeping. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for her children are gone. The Israelites had been uh, exiled into Babylon and they're in chains and the temple of God was burnt and with it many copies of the scriptures it was a time for weeping and we're also living through a time of weeping and I'm sure many of you have wept over the past two years through the difficulties of Covid, uh, homeschooling, unemployment and we've had our own exile from the ordinary things of this life as the normal has been placed on hold. And yet the bitterness and the weeping is not the final word. God responds to the mother's heart. Jeremiah 31, 16 and 17. But now this is what the Lord say. Do not weep any longer for I will reward you, says the Lord. Your children will come back to you from the distant land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, says the Lord. Your children will come again into their own land. The exile is going to come to an end. The coronavirus friends will come to an end. There will be the normal will once again be the ordinary and the Lord will say to us do not weep any longer for I will reward you. In 2 Chronicles 36 19 we read they burnt down God's temple they tore down the wall of Jerusalem they burnt all of its fortified buildings and destroyed all of its valuable items. Our own experience of church has been torn down as well. Relationships have been lost. Some who were with us are no longer with us, whilst others have joined us. The old routines have died, but new ones have come. We've had deaths, but we've also had births and marriages, and we're all changed. The wheel just keeps turning. In the words of Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. And I'm sure many of us have heard the story of the Persian monarch who once charged his wise men to invent for him a sentence that would forever be in view, which would be true and appropriate in all times, in all situations. And they presented him with a ring upon which the words were written, this too shall pass. And when you're sad, uh, you know that happiness will come. And when you're happy, you know that sadness will also come. In the words of Ecclesiastes 3, 4, there is a time to weep 
and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. As Ecclesiastes 3, 11 puts it, he has made everything beautiful in its time and he has set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. Change and death are certain in life and none of us can fathom God's plan and why things happen the way they do. None of us can know why COVID-19 happened or why some of us have gone and others have come. And yet God has set eternity in our hearts and he makes everything beautiful in its own time. So when we look back uh, from the end and we see the beauty of the pattern, the light and the dark, good and the bad times, and we will see all of it makes sense. Returning to Second Chronicles 36, 21, we're told this took place to fulfill the Lord's message spoken through Jeremiah and lasted until the land had experienced its sabbatical years. So all of the time of its desolation, the land rested in order to fulfill the 70 years. So the land needed a rest. The sabbatical years had been neglected. And as our usual pattern of church, our own temple was ripped away from us. The difficulties of Zoom and other things, each of us have had to learn to rest in Christ, for he is the true temple, the water of life that brings life into our desert hearts. As Second Chronicles 36, 22, we read in the first year, King Cyrus of Persia, in fulfillment of the Lord's message spoken through Jeremiah. The Lord motivated King Cyrus of Persia to issue a proclamation throughout of his kingdom and to also put it in writing. And it read this. This is what the King Cyrus of Persia says. The Lord God of heaven has given me all of the kingdoms of the earth. He's appointed me to build a temple for him in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Any one of his people among you may go up there and may the Lord his God be with him. Here we're introduced to Cyrus the Great, and his title is Shah and Shah, the King of Kings. He's referred to by Isaiah in Isaiah 45, 1 as an anointed Messiah, anointed one. As such, he points to the greater King of Kings, Jesus, the Messiah, who came down out of heaven for us and for our salvation. He's the builder of the temple that is his body, the body of the Messiah, the church. And in Hebrews 11:10 we read Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations a city designed and built by God and this is our true hope in the days ahead not a, a hope in a vaccine passport but in a city where God will live with us and we will be his people he will wipe every tear from our eyes and there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain and that truly will be the end of our exile the return of humanity to Eden the restoration of all things in Christ Jesus. The end of God's plan from before creation to make for himself a family through Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, friends, though we're passing out of lockdowns and into a new normal, the times ahead might be tough. But they will also be filled with laughter and filled with joy. Christ comes to each of us in the word and through the spirit. And do we have our hearts prepared to receive him and meet him there? Are we looking to find our rest in him? If eternity has been set in our hearts, can we, like the psalmist declare, Psalm 73, 25, 26, whom do I have in heaven but you, and on earth has nothing I desire beside you? My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. He is my portion forever. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this, this word in season, Lord. May it uh, come to each one of us, Lord, that we might receive it and know that times change, seasons change, and yet you remain the same forever. That You are loved towards us. You, you delight in us. You have forgiven us and made a way for us to be received with open arms back into your embrace. Amen.